This is my hardcore S plus walkthrough for Resident Evil 2 Remake and we're doing this as Claire on her first run. We're doing no box, we'll be doing less than 14,000 steps, we'll be doing no healing, no damage. We'll be avoiding all files and missile raccoons just because for the purposes of me when I was recording this I'm, I'm planning to do that in another playthrough 100% with the infinite weapons. This is solely your first playthrough or when you're doing a no box. It's it's great to do this to begin with because you're getting the no box out of the way but you're also unlocking one of the best weapons in the game as well. If you can manage this to start with you're going to make the rest of the game mega easy. This is the only hurdle. Even if you buy the unlockables DLC you still need to do a no box run which can be a little bit difficult on any difficulty if you're new to the game. But with this I'm going to be taking you through everything try and give you the, the easy strategies. There are quite a lot of guides out there on this which claim to be quite easy or the easiest route to follow but I think a lot of them they still use speedrun like strategies which can be a little bit difficult to get used to especially if you're a beginner. But the purposes of this is to show you the absolute easiest route, what I believe to be the easiest way to get through this. We're trying to go for the, the routes and the strategies which are the easiest to master. And full commentary, so I'm going to mention it all along the way. So to begin with, just run past that zombie, come up here, grab a key, turn around, and then just wait. He'll either come up to you or go sideways like that. When you go sideways, as soon as you walk past, quickly run down and use the key and exit the garage. If he comes up to you, which he probably does 1 in 12 times, which is quite rare, but it does happen, you can either shoot him in the leg a few times to stun him and then run past, or just restart because you're right at the start of the game. And just a few things I just need to mention with Hardcore. To get a Hardcore S plus rank, obviously you pick Hardcore difficulty, but get an S plus rank on that, you can use no more than three manual saves. So you can only save the game three times. On Claire's A run, her first run, you have to complete a game in two and a half hours and you cannot use any infinite items. We're not using the item box anyway, so we will not be taking out any items. But yeah, you cannot use any infinite items to get the S plus. You don't actually have to get the S plus to get Platinum Trophy on the um, PlayStation system. You don't actually need to get S plus, you only need an S rank. But only on standards. Like I say, the great thing about doing this is you have to do no box anyway and you get the best infinite weapon in the game. Well, one of the best. you got the Gatlin gun and the rocket launcher. Because I find Claire easy, that's why we're doing Claire and getting her infinite weapon. So you come in here, pull this lever down. Now this whole bit in this in the east side of Raccoon Police Department when you first come in here. There will be a few enemies but if you, as long as you're really quick here you can run past all the enemies and I'd really advise doing it. Now in here there's going to be handgun bullets on that corpse. Make sure you get these. We're going to use handgun bullets on the first boss and a lot of the sort of first zombies we encounter just to make it a bit easier to navigate later. If there's going to be any areas we need to backtrack through a few times I almost always take out any enemies there just to make it a bit easier when we come back through but if you only go through an area once I normally just probably stun an enemy or leave them all together uh, because we're not going to be coming back in here there's no worry about leaving an enemy in life so once you int interact with that shutter wait for the zombie to come through the door make sure you stay behind the table and once he starts to shamble across the table quickly go in the door behind him that's it and he should stay in that room now as long as you do not go near the door again for too long of a time now here be quick, stick to the right, quickly get past these enemies, slowly move left as you go past them to the benches on the far wall and then turn fully left and come down this corridor. As long as you're quick, you run straight to the wall head and then turn, start turning gradually, the double lunges will miss you. If you're getting hit there, it's because you're not quick enough or you're coming at a different angle, so just bear that in mind. I never fail on that ever unless I start doing things a bit differently, like I say, different angle or I'm a bit slower. Get them hang on bullets there on the bench. G2, yeah G1 is going to be sort of pistol and grenades. 
G2 is going to be six flame rounds and a flash grenade and it will be dead. G3 will just be stun lock with acid rounds and the final enemy will be, I forget his name now, is it G, G4? Will be using hand grenades and a Gatling gun. Okay, so this first enemy, just come past the window a little bit and she'll burst through, then turn around and knife her to death. Remember to make sure an enemy's dead, wait until they stop moving, wait a few seconds when they stop moving and then just attack them one more time. And if they don't move, they're dead. Because sometimes when an enemy plays dead, attacking them again will not make a move if it's too soon after. You have to wait a few seconds, then attack again. And then so we've got the handgun bullets inside that office and handgun bullets here on the corpse. Make sure you get them. Now this fat zombie, he's got low HP, so it's gonna kill him with headshots. Probably take about if you don't critical him, should probably take about five headshots to kill him. This zombie here has a lot of HP. So make sure you stand sideways onto him and then knife into it. When you knife into a zombie on the floor, never stand in front of them because they'll lunge at you. Always stay at the side of them. Yeah, so I'm going to wait a few seconds and knife him again. Just make sure he's dead. In here, get the gunpowder. Get the hanger bullets from the locker. Open this. The code is NED, N-E-D. And the other one is MRG. And then grab the speed loader and combine that with your SLS. Now, the zombie near the door where, where we came in, there's a zombie just on the left laying down on the table. Do not go behind him because it'll make him wake up. Yeah, do not go behind him. And do not go in the far door, which is behind me now. Because if you go near them steps, it'll wake up the zombie in the small office we're in now. The code for this is 9157. I'd say that again. 9, 15, 7. And it doesn't matter what way you go first, just always change direction each time. Yeah, this zombie just there on the right, which is passing now. He'll wake up if you go behind him. Yeah, and the one in the office, he'll wake up if you go near the eastern spade door. So do not go near there. Here, grab the wooden boards. Do not go past a window until you're ready, until we're done. And come in here and grab the gunpowder. Combine that with your other gunpowder. You'll get either 8, 9, or 10 bullets on hardcore. It's a little bit random when you're combining. Now place a wooden board on this window, stop him from bursting through, and another zombie for coming through later. Get the handgun bullets from this zombie sitting down, and then kill his zombie come down the steps. Once you knock him down, you can knife him. Just do not let him get too close, he will double lunge, and yeah, sometimes he will do that. Just follow him down, do not let him escape. Nice, a critical. And then we're going to kill this one next. If you don't, she's going to wake up later. And she'll stay here for the whole game. So we need to kill her. Because otherwise, we come back through here two or three times. So we do not want her hanging around. But she doesn't actually properly wake up until you've seen the helicopter cutscene. But you've got plenty of space. There's no enemies behind you. So if you need to move back, move back. It can be a bit difficult hitting her on the stairs. But just be careful again, you do not stand too close to her upper body in front of her. Because she'll try and lunge. She's dead. So what I do now, I'll come into the shower room and grab the portable safe. Because there's no item box, we've got to be very, very careful with our inventory management. And the way I do this, a lot of things I leave but then get on the way back when I've got more space. Here, grab the handgun bullets and then grab a spade key on this desk. Yeah, because if you, some things, if you collect them when we first pass them, then later on we're not going to have space for something else which we need, a key item, in like an area we only passed once. So I'll get it on the way back. Here, grab the gunpowder gun off there, grab the wooden board, come around here and shoot the zombie in the ceiling. He'll take seven headshots unless you critical him. Seven headshots unless you critical. And you do not have to let the crosshair tighten for a critical, by the way, and grab the handgun bullets off his shelf. And they're going to the library. Now in the library, do not use the ladder because it will wake up a zombie. Well, it won't wake up. It will just make him stop munching. That zombie down there is eating. Yeah, if you go down the ladder, it will make him sort of activate and come after you. So just avoid that ladder and he'll never attack you. And the zombie near the, there's a zombie near the door in here, lay down. Well, sort of sit down against the cabinet. He'll wake up if you go too close to him. So just avoid him. Kill this zombie. And then once she's dead, we're going to kill the zombie 
near the door which is sat down. You can avoid him altogether, but in case you forget and go too close to him and wake him up, especially in case Mr. X is chasing you, it's just nice to get rid of him now. So in case, like I say, if you do forget, it doesn't matter if you're not going to wake him up because he's dead. Now push that shelf all the way to the right like I just did, grab a handgun bullet behind it, and then this shelf on the far right, push it left once. Yeah, shelf number four. That's it, just once. So shelf should look like that. Afterwards, that's going to be set up for later. Now it's going to kill this guy. Yeah, he only wakes up if you get about within about six feet. But we're just going to wake. We're just going to kill him now, so you do not have to worry about him later. In case you just come through that door next to him, if you come through there a bit too close to him, that can wake him up. But yeah, just use the tables for cover. And then come in here once them two are dead. Grab the gunpowder, combine it with the other gunpowder you have, make more handgun bullets. Come over here. Now the code for this, it's fish, scorpion, and pot. I say one more time, fish, scorpion, and pot. And that gives the unicorn medal. Yeah, remember, just do not go near the ladder and you'll not wake up that zombie munching. Now when you come out this door, unlock it with a spade key, then turn right and get the handgun bullets at the end. If you do want to collect all the collectibles, by the way, going through this, I'll link my, I've got like a collectible guide linked in the description, like with images and text and maps as well. So if you do want to follow, if you do want to know where all the Mr. Raccoons are in the files, you can just look through my text guide and you can just sort of follow that on the side as you're following this video. So the password for this one is lion, leaf, and eagle. I'll just say again, lion, leaf, and the eagle. That will give you the lion medallion. Then come down these steps for a chat with Marvin and then after the chat we're going to interact with this altar and place the medallions. Lion medallion and the unicorn medallion. Free up two slots. You may have three slots if you use a knife already. Unlock this door but do not go through it. If you go through this door you're going to wake up that zombie in the office and we do need to go back through that room one time later. So you want to make sure no more zombies are alive in there. Now before we get the whole, when you trigger the helicopter sequence, more zombies will spawn in this room. So what we're going to do now is going to board up one window, just make it so it's going to be less zombies. If you had two wooden boards for this room, that'd be great because you, then you can avoid all the zombies in here without having to shoot any. We're going to put a wooden board here. The reason I put it on that window is because the zombies that come through that window, if you do not place a wooden board, the zombie that comes through, he, he sort of, he's more random in where his location will be. He might be just around the corner. He may be a bit closer to where he normally spawns in front of that window. He may be further around the corner near the exit door. But the zombie that comes through the other window is almost always in the same place. So yeah, put the wooden board on that far window. And then once you've done that, we're going to come back into the main hall, up the stairs, and into the second floor, onto the east side. Yeah, I was doing a live commentary for this at one point, but it's, I couldn't focus. I kept forgetting things, so I had to end up doing post commentary. So what I do, I've just discarded that spade knife, the key from the garage, the dagger, because we do not, we're going to need that inventory space soon. So if you still got the dagger, discard it, and then examine your portable safe and crack the code. I'm just doing all this, you can do this whenever, I'm just doing it now while I've got the inventory space, uh, sorry when I've got my inventory open. We complete this in about 1 hour 45 by the way, uh, 1 hour 42 to be exact, so you've got about 40, 45 minutes to spare. So um, don't worry if you're not as quick as what I am, but like I say you can spare 45 minutes. You can come in here, just get that key card, just grab that key card and then come back out. Yes, I do get the grenade launcher a lot earlier than a lot of other guys that wait into the laboratory. Because the grenade launcher is actually very good against almost all enemies. And I use it on the G monsters and G2. Now grab the handgun bullets from there and then grab the bolt cutters. Then after the dialogue with Marvin, we're going to unlock the store by cutting the chain. Now I'd sprint through here to the next door. 
this next bit we need to be very very quick so it's going to be about three or four zombies closing in on you but as long as you're quick shouldn't be a problem cut this door come in here grab a flash grenade on the left quickly just there grab a handgun bullet on this corpse laying against the wall quickly come up here and into a small office grab the valve handle and then grab a high grade gunpowder turn around quickly grab the fuse and then exit the room just be quick there's going to be zombies outside but as long as you're quick they shouldn't be have reached the door yet place a fuse onto this fuse panel to unlock the shutter and then go on through yeah as long as you're quick in that whole area after the helicopter sequence and get into this point as long as you're quick no zombies should reach you in time so just be very quick and follow my path as well now it's going to be new zombies in here a zombie comes through his first window but he comes through normally as you reach him so you can get by before he appears but this next bit is going to be a zombie just through here on the left so get ready to shoot him in the leg and once you stun him run past like so it may take one shot it may take two or three but just be quick shoot him in the leg quickly and then run past remember there's a zombie coming through that rear window so you need to be quick before he sort of recovers and makes his way to you you come in here use the cutting tool and you can discard it afterwards that's all we need to cut and grab the electronic gadget do not collect anything else in this room we'll be getting the flash grenade later don't worry about it come in here and place the key, the, uh, key onto the security panel and the code you want to put in is 109 all we're taking for now is the handgun bullets take them out and place the key card in the armory but we're not going to take it yet just place it you can actually you could actually open the door uh, just interact with it and then press circle if you actually try to collect something but yeah just place a key card in it but do not collect the weapons or the ammo remember our inventory space is very limited and we need to look ahead to other things we need to collect this is why we're keeping our inventory space how it is everything i collect is for a reason so do not collect anything else into the shower room use the valve handle to um, turn off the hot steam come in here and get the gunpowder from this locker and combine it with that high grade gunpowder make acid rounds either two or three now walk into this room because there's liquor yeah that thing on the ceiling it will hear you if you run so walk and once you're in the stars office it can't come in here liquors cannot travel between rooms yeah get the battery and then combine it for the electronic gadget make a detonator then run over here and then turn around and walk if you go straight back into that corridor if the liquor's already aggroed it doesn't normally de-aggro in time you normally need to run to the far end of that room and then turn around like I just did to reset the liquor so get the battery run to the far end to reset this liquor and then walk back into the corridor and then walk down here past that liquor do not get too close if you walk too close to them they will notice you but it's got to be like very close literally within like one or two steps so just keep your way and once through the corridor you can start running it again now come through here now and back into the upper storage room remember do not use the ladder now in here it's going to place the detonator on the wall here now quickly since you place it run back out the door you just came in let the door close and then open the door so it's against this shelf here because that shelf normally falls down but if you do this it won't so leave the door against it wait for the explosion and then you can come through here with the door lent against it when the explosion happens it will stop that shelf from falling down now over here the code for this is the maiden the bow and arrow and the sort of snake maiden bow and arrow and the snake now it's going to be liquor shortly a lot of previous guides uh, previous videos i've made i've normally just run past him but get rid of your flash grenade move very slowly once you get through that fence he's going to appear and then lobby flash grenade that's it now when you get past him just be careful because he will be slashing when he's stunned and get past him and come through here if you be a bit early for flash grenade when you know if you know when he's going to drop down you can actually stun him in place where he drops down but just edge forward with a flash grenade ready so you can flash him straight away that's it grab the combat knife from that corpse just in case you need it for the boss and now we're going to head down to the first boss now your three saves it's entirely up to you where you want to save i normally save at like the 30 minute mark all the time just because if you do restart you haven't got to do it all again you know if you do die you need to retry 
yeah use a uh, maiden medallion on there to lower the door and come through here there's a save point in there and a ink ribbon so if you want to save your game guys before the boss do so in that room we just came through I'll be doing my save when we get through the parking garage and get back up into Raccoon Police Department pretty much in the Chief's office that's where I will be saving my game for the first time now I'm just going to come down here and get the hand grenade I'm going to use these on G1 we're going to use this hand grenade and also the hand grenade you find during the boss fight but what I normally do I use the hand grenade to stun him and then when he's stunned I quickly run in and get the other hand grenade and the handgun bullets beside it and then I quickly get back to the path where I bait him around and then throw the other grenade and then just start doing the strategy but I think I do miss both my grenades here just because yeah so when we begin you can just get 15 shots off if you're not quick you may only get 10 or 12 but try and get 15 off if you can Obviously, if you can hit a sweet point, that's great. It takes more damage. Yeah, just. See, it's quite tight getting 15 off. So just try and get 10 if you're worried. And straight after that, run all the way down here. Turn around and lobby hand grenade at him. I think I actually miss him. Yeah, I completely miss him. So I have to sort of go back. Yeah, so normally what you'd do, you'd, you'd hit him. It would stun him. And then you'd go in that little corner and get the hand grenade and the handgun. And all I do, I just keep baiting around the normal, the central square path. Go around the outside. I just keep baiting them around and turning and shooting them when it's safe to do so. So I'm going to try again. So he was just doing an attack. So I saw this as my window. Yeah, you would come in there, get the hand grenade and the handgun bullets. And I thought it was just coming behind me. So I lobbed my hand grenade. But he actually came around the other way, little bugger. So I wasted another hand grenade. But yeah, once you've thrown them both, just get back to baiting him around and shooting him when you get a window. Always keep looking back at him and checking your path as well. Because if you don't look at him for so long, he normally runs in the opposite direction and he can hide in the pipes above you. And you normally need to sort of go underneath him to get him to uh, jump down. Yeah, so just keep using the camera. Yeah, you should have as much trouble as me getting them hand grenades. Like I say, when I lobbed that first one, I should have lobbed it better. It should have stunned him. And then we run in there then, get the hand grenade and the hand grenade ammo. And then go back and then lob the other hand grenade if it's safe to do so. But if not, you would just keep baiting him around the area again. And then lob that hand grenade when you get a window. And then start this shooting strategy. Yeah, fortunately, you don't really have much weaponry at this point in the game, other than the grenade launcher, but we need our ammo for other bits to make other bits easier. We could use a grenade launcher here, but the ammo would be more useful later on. This is why I'm using the pistol ammo. It's not too bad. I mean, look, you just keep baiting him around the area. It's not like he's got crazy attacks which are hard to dodge. As long as you keep distance between you, he can't hit you. That's all we need to focus on doing, keeping distance between you and shooting him only when there's a window to do so. Yeah, just keep moving the camera forward and back, check it in front of you. I normally check in front of me on the corners because if not, sometimes I'll run it into a corner and I get stuck. Yeah, you see what I'm doing? When I'm running on the straight, I look at him and when I'm getting to a corner, I actually look at the corner. Yeah, and once he's dead, you should end up yeah, roughly about that. I'm actually really low in ammo. Normally, I have more than this. So, you hopefully, you should be a bit more ammo than that. Now, grab these handgun bullets in this corner. We do still need our handgun bullets. We're not over yet with handgun. We actually use our handgun until we get into a sewer. Handgun bullets here. If you've played through the game already and you know for the orphanage, I actually use my handgun bullets on the dogs. A lot of enemies we just have to kill them to be safe when we're trying to do no damage. So once you're up the ladder, grab the gunpowder and if you did use a knife on Birkin by the way, as a defence item, it will drop just in that small area in front of the ladder by the way. Yeah, assuming it wasn't destroyed. Just pull the lever down to move the catwalk and then head up into the parking garage.
Yeah, you could save your game in this little storeroom just ahead of us. Yeah, say so Incribbin in the locker. If you haven't saved your game yet, you could do it here. Just remember only three saves on hardcore for the S plus rank. The S rank is different. For the S rank, I don't think your number of saves matter. All that matters on S rank is your time. But yeah, for S plus, must be under three saves, no infinite weapons, and of course, within two and a half hours on the first run. So once you're interacted with the panel, you find out you don't have the card and then the doors will unlock. And then I'll come through here. The enemies will not be active just yet. So we're gonna come in here and grab the flame rounds. Yep, just in that corner, two flame rounds. The reason I didn't collect any rounds is because you will see, we're gonna have exactly 10 rounds by the time we've collected this first bunch we're gonna be passing the first few pickups and that's why flame rounds which I've left already is because we're going back through them areas and it's to stop them taking up an extra inventory space until we need to and we have the space of course so in here make sure you walk there's two liquors grab this high grade gunpowder combine it with that gunpowder we got earlier and then obviously combine your acid rounds and put them all into one slot and then keep walking all the way to the other door in here, once you get through the door, you can run now because liquors can't get you. And then we're going to come in this door. Now we're going to get a flash grenade by pulling this end, end more end um, bed out. Yep, yeah, grab the flash grenade. And then I'm going to pull out this, this drawer. Pull this one out. Now, as soon as you take the spade key, the enemy sat down near the door we came in is going to wake up. So you need to be really quick. As soon as you get it, Turn around, go straight to that door. As long as you're quick, he will not be able to wake up in time, just like so. And then once you get here, we're gonna walk into here. Walk, wait for the door to close, and then sprint out. Just get the attention of the liquors. Make sure you reasonably close the door when you sprint out, otherwise they may catch you in time. And then you come out, you wait about 10 seconds, like so, for the liquors to reset. If you go back in too quick, they'll still be aggroed and you're pretty much waiting for them to get on that firewall like so. Uh, at the moment, only one of them is on, but if that liquor is a bit too, quite too far right like he was there, you can run past him, walk past him on the left. But if you sort of, if you sat in the middle, you don't have enough space. But all you need to do, just get their attention again, run out the door, and the best, the best place to have them is both on that side wall, like that first, that, that other one went up on. They will both go onto that far wall eventually, and then that's probably the best way. But if you have that f one nearest to you, a bit further to the right on that path you need to walk through, you can sort of get past them. But if he's sort of close to the middle, don't even bother trying. Just go out of the room again, reset them, and till it on the far wall. Now you're coming in here, just use the diamond key on that door to um, unlock it. Just unlocking that door. Just be quick, so two zombies. And of course, again, in this corridor, make sure you walk because there's a zombie on the ceiling. That's it, and once you're into the actual parking garage, you can start running again. Must be where that guy came from. Now you've got a diamond key, you can unlock this door, and pull a lever to activate the elevator, and then head up into the chief's office. There is a high grade gunpowder in this room, but we will be getting it later, don't worry. I actually use all the high grade gunpowders in this playthrough. We use every single one. But all the acid rounds we get from it, we actually hoard. We actually end up hoarding about 42 acid rounds. You know, give or take with the randomness when you're combining, crafting. Now in the chief's office, just gonna head right into the back room with the cell. I'm gonna grab the ink ribbon. So I'm, I'm gonna make my first save now. If you made your first save already, then obviously do not make a save now. We want to save it. We want to save it a second time in the sewer and a third time in the laboratory. Yeah, and they come here and grab the uh, little painting with a key inside. And I'm just going to unlock this door first with the key, the heart key, and I'm going to save my game. 
anything that we have to any key items we pick up we will be discarding them all so all key items I'm going to be using them all the maximum amount of times you can use them on everything just so I get the option to discard we're going to head up the stairs first and grab the wooden board that's it do not collect anything else there is a flash grenade in that upper room and a a pack of handgun bullets but we're going to leave them until much later because of inventory space again down here use the wooden board on this first window if you go past the window a zombie will come through so let's go straight to the window use the board and that's less one less zombie to worry about now come down to this far end and grab the high grade gunpowder from the locker and then once you've got that come through this door use the heart key now eventually a lick is going to appear but you can run to begin with grab the gunpowder first run to the jewelry box and then start walking run to the jewelry box and then walk back to the window the mirror and the lick will burst through and then grab the gunpowder from the this guy here died in a very unfortunate manner yeah grab the gunpowder beneath him and combine it with high grade gunpowder make more acid rounds and then combine out of the other acid rounds to take it one slot now you may have a similar amount to me but if you if you had good RNG every time you crafted acid rounds you probably got nine right now but still only taking up one slot now I'm going to open these lockers ready but I'm not going to take the items yet so you've got flash grenade and handgun ammo but like I say we're not going to take them just open the locker ready now walk in this room otherwise you'll aggro the zombies straight away and then quickly kill these two zombies there's two of these so just be careful the other one's actually in the far right corner the way we're looking right now now I get very lucky here this way you should not get near the front of an enemy that can happen yeah do not try and knife a zombie from the front luckily I had my defense weapon here comes the other one now if you need to if the zombies get too close go back into that door we just came through the zombies will follow you through you can just kill them as they come through and then if you still get too close just back up to the stairs because when you get back to them stairs in that previous room the zombies will not follow you but yeah if they get too close just back up to that previous room and slowly make your way to the stairs guys as you kill them now grab the heart key uh, sorry use the heart key to unlock that door and then grab the large cock from here yes make sure you do not forget to unlock that door with the heart key because we need to, need to discard it later for inventory space but do not collect anything else other than the large cock now when you get over here, there's going to be one zombie we want to kill, but try not to go to the bottom of the steps, because when you do, you're going to make another zombie wake up. So just stay here, try to kill the zombie near the acid, wait till it comes onto the steps, just so if you need to go down and knife him, you can do. So like I say, when you get to the bottom of these steps, it's going to wake up another zombie. But for now, we've only got one, we want to try and save our ammo. So I actually go to knife him here, but I get too close to the bottom, wake up the other one. There we go. Yeah, I woke up the other zombie then. Yeah, there he is, wake him up. Yeah, make sure he's dead. She's dead. We're going to be coming back up here in a minute. Yeah, now just avoid this zombie. Shouldn't need to kill him, even if you have woke him up. There's plenty of space to avoid him in this uh, in this room. Now there's only one of them. You can, if he does block your way, just stun him and run past. No need to kill him. We only need to kill the other one because two zombies can be difficult to avoid, but one is easy if you have enough space. Now, when you've pulled that lever and activated the water pipe, come up here and open the fountain to extinguish the flames, and then grab these handgun bullets. Now come through here just to trigger Mr. X to appear. Now make sure he sees you before you run away. Jesus. That's it, let him see you. And then you want to climb this ladder. Now what we're going to do, we're going to wait for him to climb the ladder. And we're going to straight away going to climb down it and he will not hit you. And I like to do this as well. It's an easy way to dodge him to begin with. And it also gives you more of a window to actually escape from him. So let's wait for him to get to the top and then quickly sort of move past him to the ladder and spam X and you'll climb down as soon as the prompt becomes active yep now just head 
all the way into the library. Yeah, normally when you come into this room at this speed, this room here, you normally hear him sort of um, de aggro. Yeah, but just keep running to the office. If you do ever hear him nearby, and you, if you do hear him nearby ever, and you don't want him to locate you, start walking because when you walk, you make less noise. Zombies will not hear you as much, and it just might, it might just make that difference of him finding you and him not finding you. Just if you walk when you hear his footsteps. So run through here, into this corridor. Make sure you walk. Remember, there's a liquor in here, and he's still here. Now we're going to unlock this door with the diamond key, and then we can discard it. And you also want to discard the knife now already if you haven't already used it. Yep, and that knife. Now we're going to grab the gunpowder and then grab the portable safe. Now don't run in here like I did because you're going to trigger that. You're going to alert that liquor just because we're too close to the door. Just keep walking and then back into it. If you do trigger the liquor, just make sure you wait about. Yeah, wait. Normally wait about 10 seconds for him to de aggro. Yeah, but if you if you just walk in that room and keep walking, you shouldn't trigger him like I did. See, them seconds could have been the difference between Mr. X appearing and not appearing. So, yeah, if I didn't get stuck in that room by triggering the liquor, um, Mr. X may not have been where he is for me, you're going to see soon. So grab the flame rounds in here, grab the flash grenade. Mr. X cannot enter this room, by the way, or the liquor, and grab the high grade gunpowder. Combine that with the uh, yeah gunpowder which you should already have and you'll make more acid rounds now back in the corridor make sure you walk there's flame rounds just around the corner here remember there's liquor try not to walk directly beneath it because it will notice you grab the flame rounds off that bench then come in here you can run when you come to the shower room just remember if you hear Miss X's footsteps start to walk now loot this locker the password is cap C A P you get flame rounds times two in there. And then this locker on the left are another flame rounds. Should have 10 right now. Now come in here. Yeah, we can hear, I can hear Mr. X, that's why I'm walking. He's actually upstairs. I am hesitant, but you've got flash grenades. If you need to use a flash grenade, guys, use one. We do want to try and save them, but if you need to use one, use one. You can actually head into the safe room here. And wait for him to move away. But you're pretty much walking down here because there's liquor. And then into this armory. You uh, unlock this other portable safe and then place the key. Yeah, if, if you didn't hear Mr. X, you can actually run. But once you get to the slower floor, start walking before you get to the bottom of the steps because otherwise the liquor will hear you. But yeah, spot on floor, you need to make sure you're walking, otherwise the liquor will hear you. Yeah, so we're going to place this key, and that should be all keys, and then we're going to type in 203 to unlock the locker with the hip pouch, and also 208, which will unlock the locker with the flame rounds. Yeah, so 203 and 208. Yeah, there's the flame rounds, and then 203. Yeah, two more inventory space. Yeah, on hardcore, you only get three hit pouches, not the normal six on the other two difficulties. Yeah, I'm still walking, so Mr. X, he was on the upper floor, so I think he might still be around somewhere. He can come in here. Just make sure you have your flash grenade ready if you need to. But remember, there is liquor out here. Now, this liquor's a bit weird when you come out of this room. You always run straight to the door. So I normally open the door and then sort of move back a little bit. I'm just trying to see where Mr. X is. He's here somewhere. He might come in here. Obviously, he's a bit random. Yeah, see that liquor? He runs to the door. So I normally open it just to cause him to move. Because once you run through it once, he doesn't normally do it again. I'm just waiting for Mr. X. 
That's it. He ran to the door again. Yeah, be very careful coming out of this door because that liquor. Right, I think he's de aggroed. Yep, so just be careful coming out of that room. You see, opening that door, it just, it seems to cause the liquor to go and look. Uh, but once you come in here, get the flash grenade, and then use the heart key, and you can discard the heart key afterwards. You should have three flash grenades at this point if you haven't used one yet. Now grab the car jack, and grab the hand grenade. Now wait for Mr. X to come in. He might not come in if you do not if you do not hear him walking by close, you can go back out. But when you get that jack, it normally alerts him to your location. But sometimes he will not come to you. But just be ready. If you hear his footsteps, just wait in there for him to come. And then what I normally do, I flash him in that I, I go behind the shelf shelf, I flash him, and then I run out, obviously walk into that corridor for liquor, come in here and make my way up to a library. But yeah, you want to try and keep one flash grenade. We've used to one, so we could spare another one. Because I normally like to take one or two into the sewer. Now here, use a car jack to lower it. Obviously be quick before Miss X catches up to you. And now we've already moved these into place, all we need to do now is just move this one. And they're all good. That's it, up the ladder now. We are not coming back in this room. So it doesn't matter if you wake up that zombie munching or trigger him, it doesn't matter, so you're not coming back in. So up the ladder, come across here, now in this room, walk, yeah I think it's just below me, yeah this is a zombie in here but I like to walk just because it doesn't trigger the zombie as quick and I actually kill this one with a flame round, just shoot him with one flame round. You can get through this door without getting hit, you know, but it, if you slow and you get really bad RNG, he might grab you in time, so just safer to take him out with a flame round. Now use the large cock on there to lower the staircase and then take it back out. Now you're gonna head up the stairs and take the gear, take the small gear from the contraption up here and then put the large cock in its place. Just like so, and then we're going to head back down and place a small gear onto the other contraption. And that should lower the small sort of lift in the middle. Yeah, so put your small cock in there. That's it. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go into the back corridor and get the high, the sorry, the large gunpowder or gunpowder large in brackets so it's called. Yep, large gunpowder. We're going to combine that with a high grade gunpowder on the way out once you're back in the parking garage. So make sure you remember to take the electronic part in the box. Remember, the amount of times I've got to take this, remember to pick that up. Now very careful, Mr X cannot come in this room but he may be loitering outside. So just make sure it's safe to do so and then come out here. That door is locked at the moment in that corner, so you can't go through there, but sometimes you may see him walking down to it. Now, it's only one zombie, so I'm just gonna bait him and run past, like so. No need to waste ammo. Now, I think he's below me, but just be careful, because sometimes I've had him behind this door, so just be careful when you open this door. And then once you're back in this room from earlier, if you do not, do not kill them two zombies from earlier, they ambush you, that's why we killed him. Yeah, grab the flame rounds in here now. Now I've got the inventory space, and then come in this room and grab the other box. There you go. And then outside here, now we're gonna grab the handgun bullets from the locker and the other flash grenade. Yeah, like so. Right, we can go back down into the chief's office now. I think Miss X is actually right behind me. Yep, and we're good. You're safe. Once you get in this room, he cannot come in this room, so you're safe. No more Mr. X to avoid, other than the parking garage, but it's just like a one-time thing, that. And it's always guaranteed to happen. 
So just examine the cardboard boxes to get the electronic part, use them both on the puzzle, complete the puzzle to restore power and then grab a keycard ready for the sherry segment. Yep, so with Sherry, to begin with, grab the doll behind her and then go over to the puzzle, interact with it, and then examine the doll and look into the back, get the cube. Yep, and then place a cube on there. Now, once you place a cube, page, uh, change cube number one with cube number three. And then rotate them all into the into place. So just change number one with number three, and then just rotate them all into place. That's all you need to do. And yes, we could have just pulled this down. It's just fixed by tape and cardboard, but we had to use scissors. If you did that quick enough, you'll get a trophy if you haven't already. But you're going to be doing this show segment again later, so it's not a big problem. Yeah, pull us out and climb up here. Yeah, Sherry's got an exclusive file uh, just back there on a little side table in the corner. But like I say, you will be coming back through here. But yeah, there's an exclusive file with her. So we're going to head, head down into Chief's sort of uh, office. Head down to Chief's office. We're going to grab the key and then we need to run away from him and then back up to nursery and hide in the nursery. Just make sure you're very quick on this part, you do not get stuck anywhere. I get worried so I get stuck on the wall for a few seconds and it worries me but I still make it out. Yeah, you've got to make sure you're always running and you're always running away from him. And obviously when you're hiding just always stay out of sight. But it's, it's not really difficult this bit. I know people have died um, but I'm, I'm not sure why, perhaps because they're not running. I just don't know how you would die during this when you're supposed to run away from him. Yeah, back upstairs to the nursery. Yeah, I get stuck on that door and it, that, I was actually getting a bit worried then. Yep, and in the nursery just start hiding. Yeah, when I get, when I get to the end of the game on this, I'm... There seems to have been some sort of update on the PS5 or some of my settings and if you if you fulfill the conditions for many trophies at once now it, it only shows you one popping yeah, it only shows you one of them popping but um, they're actually still recorded in your trophy list and you see them all they've all got the same time like here obviously we complete the game and we I get no healing no item box uh, minimum uh, lower than 40,000 steps. I get a trophy for completing on hardcore S plus standard. But I do, because you're doing more at once, you only see one of the trophies pop. Uh, but the game, the system will still record the footage for them all. You know the the actual video that it saves when you get a trophy. It still records it all, but it only shows one popping. And I don't like that. I liked it when you see every single one pop in a row. It's nice that you know, like when you pop 10 trophies at a time. But yeah, it seems to be some sort of update, or unless it's something in my settings. You have to let me know about that, but um, I'm pretty sure it's been an update, so I've not touched anything in my settings. Yeah, so um, when he goes over there, he'll sort of lean over and be sick, and he can come around here and hide under this table next to Pinocchio. Obviously, Pinocchio is not hiding. Well, I guess he is, he's just pretending to be a doll. Perhaps we should try that. Yeah, so just wait here now for him to run into the bathroom. This is your last fucking chance. Show yourself. Now. Yep, you'll go and vomit again and shortly, and that's when he, he goes into the bathroom and you can get a key from him. Yep, in the bathroom, go and grab a key from the door, and now quickly head all the way back down to his bottom office. Just make sure you're always running. 
If he catches you, it's like an instant game over. I see you. Just make sure you're very hit very quick here. Good to see you again, Claire. So that's show complete. You'll get the parking permit, make sure you take it. I think I've pressed circle once to place it back. I didn't realise, so make sure you press X to take it. And now it's going to head back into the parking garage. At this point, you should still have only one save that you've made. Like I so said, we're going to make number two in the sewer, which is not actually that, probably like five minutes away. We're going to be making, well, I'll be making save number two. The sewer is quite easy. The, the way I do the sewer, I don't use any crazy dodging. I, I actually kill a G monster, so. Yeah, it's not really much difficulty there. Yeah, now now back down here, pick up the high grade gunpowder and combine it with a large gunpowder to make more acid rounds. Now that we've got a space. So once we use the parking permit, Mr. X is going to appear. All we need to do is avoid him until the shutter races enough. And then go for the shutter and up to the far gate on the road. Of course, the enemies to come through and then bait Mr X away again actually wait for the enemies to get away from the gate and then go through the gate yeah, what I like to do as well walk left and sort of alternate between these yellow bollards because that sometimes that will confuse Mr X and he won't know what to do that's it, you go left, right, left, right that will confuse him a little bit it sort of messes up with his AI uh, but it doesn't always work and then come through here and uh, cause some enemies to come through there now bait him away again just wait for him to get away from the doorway and then go back to it and go through what yeah once you get through this gate miss X and the zombies will not follow you there you go you're safe that's it does just show itself off They look like a lovely couple in that picture. Now once you get here and you see the orphan, they start to walk. There's a, a woman down here going through the trash and we want to leave her. If you walk, you will not aggro her. And if you quit killing this dog, because that will actually trigger her, you can actually get away before she actually reaches you. So you do not need to waste ammo on her. Now quickly kill this dog. Just hold R2 until he's dead, like so. There's three dogs in this first room. But once you come through this gate, that zombie cannot come through here, so you're safe. Now get ready, so the dog's gonna appear on this car. Shoot him once, he'll always knock him down, and then quickly lock back onto him, and shoot him a few times. You might kill him, if not, just be ready to kill him when he jumps down. And when these, zombie, when these dogs are going for you, always move left or right, because they always jump in a straight line. And then get this dog. Yeah, just move left or right to dodge them when they run at you, because they always jump in a straight line. That's it, so then three dogs to begin with. And they come into the basketball court and just run over to this blue area. That's it, just stop in the blue area like so. And then it will not trigger these dogs to jump over the fence. If you go too close, they'll try to jump over the fence. But from here, you can carefully pick them off. If you're too far away, it seems your bullets don't seem to do much damage. So that's why you want to come to this blue area before you try and kill them. And then once you've got these two, move forward a bit more and you'll see another dog downside of this car. There he is kill him if you miss him too much and he does jump over the fence then just come back through his gate and kill him from this side again now it's a dog on the far side of the bus but he can I mean he never does it with me he can jump over into this side uh, so just be careful of that but we just want to kill this zombie he cannot come off the bus so if he gets too close just come off the bus 
like so. Right, so I'm just going to finish him off. Yeah, ammo does get a little bit tight. You can see my ammo is quite tight. You can spare one hand grenade, by the way, if you need to. Yeah, it's best to keep it, but if you can, if you need to, you can spare one hand grenade if you need to use it anyway. Remember, we've got one more dog to kill yet. Or you can use a flame round. Yeah, you can You can spare. Yeah, I should have said that. You can spare a flame round or an acid round if you need to. You can spare probably one or two flame rounds, probably more. I mean, we end up with about five flame rounds spare, but I end up with about 10 acid rounds spare. Yeah, so if you do, if you do need to use any ammo, probably best to save the hand grenade actually, and probably use two or three acid rounds and maybe one flame round. But flame rounds are great because they will kill zombies in one hit. So yeah. If you have low ammo, probably use a flame round on that zombie and then use uh, perhaps the acid rounds on the dog if you have run out of ammo. I have the pendant. Yeah, so once in the orphanage, you come into the far back, go down the ladder into the tunnel underneath and then catch up with Sherry and then just keep running away to um, avoid Mr X which will appear and there will be a cutscene and that is that Sherry, where are you? I think I tried doing a no box before you know Sherry. a long time ago when I did all my previous guides on this but I think I stopped doing it because I found it too difficult or something I don't know that there was a reason so I, I do remember starting to root it and then I stopped. I don't remember. Because the thing is, I actually think it's quite, it's not too difficult. Yeah, I actually don't find it that bad. So, I just don't know why I stopped doing it before. So, it's really useful a no box on Hardcore S+. Plus. Because like I say, it gets a no box out of the way and it also unlocks an infinite weapon at the same time. So, yeah, I think it's pretty useful. Yeah, so when you jump down here, get the high powered round just there on the desk. There should be three of them. Grab them first because once you jump down here, you cannot get back up. So yeah, get them, high powered rounds. And then come down here. We're not actually going to be using the handgun bullets no more, the standard ones, so we're going to discard them soon. Now there's a high grade gunpowder in this part of the sewer, but we'll be getting it on the way back through later. So don't worry about it. If you wonder why I didn't collect it, we're getting it later. So this way you want a flash grenade ready for. So I hope you got some left. You've only actually got two zombies to take, to dodge to begin with if you're actually running straight out. Because uh, all I'm doing this for is really to get one flash round and to get out of this area safely. But yeah, if you quit, you could just dodge your two enemies on the right by stunning one and running past. Uh, but yeah, get that flame round, then I wait till that zombie gets up, otherwise the flash grenade will not stun him. Yes, you cannot stun them while they are standing up from sitting down. So yeah, wait for that one in the flame round, stand up, and then lob my flash grenade, stun all three, and then safely get out. And I'm going to save my game. This will be my second save. Yeah, save number two. There's ink ribbon just there, so I'm going to discard the ink ribbon now. And I will be discarding the hangar bullets very, very shortly. If you've got any hangar bullets left, you can use them on one of these upcoming enemies if you want. If you want to try and get a good RNG and hope that you kill him with them uh, few bullets that you may have. Because the high powered rounds, they will kill a zombie in one hit as long as it's a headshot. It's like a sort of like a automatic critical I think because it does so much damage to a head yeah grab the t-bar and then we're going to come over to the safe and get the high powered components yeah the combination that zombie head he will not wake up unless you get close to him so just stay away and he will not wake up yeah the code for this is 2 12 and 8 the code is actually on the side of the safe on the right side, yes, yeah, so 2, 12, and 8. Doesn't matter what direction you go, just make sure you change direction on each number. Yeah, combine that with the SLS, and now you can use high powered rounds. 
So yeah, one headshot. Try not to waste all this ammo. We probably only, all together, we probably have about two or three bullets to spare with this. Yeah, so um, I was lucky here and actually hit two with one shot. So this guy's probably not got much HP left. So I'm just going to finish him off with my remaining handgun bullets. Otherwise, I'll just get headshot with high-powered rounds. Yep, so I'm just wasting them bullets, or you can just discard them. Yep, headshot this guy, otherwise he will wake up on the way back, and we want to shoot him now while he's in the easy target laid still. Yeah, use a T-bar on this. And then we're just going to get the key. Yeah, for some reason I had two and one flash grenades, so I'm just um, putting them, combining them together. Yeah, grab that sewer key from there, and they're going to head back now. Yeah, this zombie will kill later. I can't remember when he wakes up. It might be on the way back through here after opening that door, or it might be after um, going into the lower part of the sewer. I can't quite remember, but yeah, killing him just then. Easy target, and it pre prevents him from being in trouble later. So you pull that lever. Then jump down into the swamp and grab this hand grenade. Remember, keep your hand grenades from later. You're going to use all your hand grenades on the last boss. Now, you need to be very quick here. Get his high grade gunpowder and then stick to the left and try to run sort of in a sort of semi straight line. And you should dodge that enemy. If he does stun you, as long as you're running, you should still be able to get away in time before he gets a chance to grab you. And then quickly get out of here and use the T bar to unlock this blast, this uh, flood door, I guess. Here, grab the um, high powered rounds from that barrel in the corner. Then come this little lift and headshot this guy in the middle. Otherwise, he'll wake up. Now, unlock this door. Now, it's going to be four zombies out here. Him there. Another one will come from around the corner on the left. I'm just going to stay in this door. Two zombies will come for you to begin with. If you can't quite get a headshot, just come back in the door, but don't stand too close and then shoot him through the door, the grill at the top. But make sure you do not you shoot between the gaps in the grill. Because you can actually hit the grill itself. And then headshot that guy in the distance on the pipe. Quite difficult to see him, but he will when you get so close he will drop down. But you can actually headshot him there. And then this is the last guy around the corner. And that's all of them. Like I say, you got one zombie in that office and then four zombies sort of moving around outside. And then unlock this door and grab the large gunpowder. Combine that with the high grade gunpowder. You'll probably be over 20. I mean, because I'm getting bad RNG with my crafting, I'm actually on 20. And I forgot, but get the rook from that panel on the wall. I actually have to come back in a minute. But yeah, we just weren't past it. Get the rook from the panel on the wall just about there. Yeah, now what we're doing, we're pushing that shelf out of the way and we're coming back up here. What we're coming back up here for is to get some high powered rounds to use the T-bar so we can discard it later and also to get some more flame rounds. Yeah, so you've got them high powered rounds. Yeah, so just going all the way to the top, back to the secret room, back in the raccoon police department. Yeah, back up to the top. You could go and do the treasure now uh, if you had the film. But yeah, I don't bother just because obviously be more enemies. And we're just, all we're coming up here for really guys is to use the T-bar on this and get a flame rounds and of, obviously them high powered rounds which I mentioned. So when we go back down there's going to be some G-monsters. Yeah, like I said, the G-monsters, I don't try to dodge them unless it's a really easy dodge. The only dodge which I'm confident and consistent with is when they charge at you with a handout. And then when they miss, they dive underwater for a few seconds. That's the only dodge, that's the only attack which I'm confident in dodging. Any other attack, it's it, you have to be very, very precise with your 
maneuvers and your timing and it's just not worth it especially when you try and do sort of a no damage like I am here it's not worth the risk so I've got the ammo so all I do I just there's two which I kill there's two which I kill no sorry three which I kill and um, another one which I just done Yeah, so again, if you've got the rook, go right and get it now from the wall before you follow me down here. You're going to see me go back for it in a minute. It probably weighs about a minute, but yeah, make sure you get the rook. Luckily, I do remember, actually, and it actually means I have to waste another flame round. So when you get so far down here, uh, he's going to run. When you get to that bag just on the left, he's going to submerge. He's going to charge at you, and once you submerge, just get ready to run past him. That's it. And then turn around and shoot him with a flame round. And then you can run around here, run up here, get the high powered rounds, just make sure you're quick. Get the high powered rounds and then run back. The reason I shot him then, you're going to have to shoot him anyway. But sometimes he'll do the attack where he spawns his little, his little um, parasites. He'll spit them out and they'll come crawling towards you in the water. But if you stun him then, uh, it'll stop him from trying to do that move. And then I climb out here and use the T-bar. Yeah, but if he does spawn his little power site so it spits them out and you see them coming for you, obviously just run run to the side. You do not want them to jump out at you. And yeah, I've actually just realised that I forgot the rook. Yep, yeah, just dawned on me. <laughs> I was thinking, what? I kept running a bit and I was thinking, okay, when am I going to get that? And I just thought, I'd best go and get it now. Either, either way, there's going to be a G monster in my way. No matter what way I go, so I just come this way. This guy only needs one more hit to kill him. It normally takes two flame rounds to kill him. And sometimes it takes a high powered round as well. So yeah, there's, there is one. Two flame rounds don't kill him. I actually have to use shoot him once for a high powered round as well. Yeah, but never try to run past a uh, G monster. Unless they're doing that charge attack and have just dived in the water. And you can quickly run past. Yeah, this key item here, the Rook. Do not forget that. Not done too bad. That's the only thing I forget in the in this whole playthrough, and I've I had to go back for. So yeah, not not too bad. It's normally it's normally that or the electronic part which I forget. Yeah, it's normally one of them. So either that Rook or the electronic part part in the clock tower. Yeah, I, I killed him because I'm coming back through here. That's why I killed him. So now we're going into the lower part of the sewer. This is a part that a lot of people don't like. But yeah, we're going to make it mega easy by just killing them. Killing the G monsters flat out. Yeah, so once you drop down here, be ready. You'll see one sticking out of the water just there. I'm going to shoot him once. There you go. Wait for him to recover and for the flames to go out. Do not... The flames actually kill him over time. So leave him to burn. So that's doing damage. And then once the flame's gone out, shoot him again. Now if that doesn't kill him, just shoot him once in the head or his weak point with a high-powered round. And that will finish him off. But that should kill him. Like so. But this second one... The second one was going to pop up here. He always seems to take two flame rounds and a high powered. So there's one. Wait for flame to go out. And then shoot him again. There we go. Yeah, now just be ready. Make sure you reload it. Just in case you don't kill him. Like I say, try and shoot him in his weak point if you can. That'll do the most damage. And that's it, he's dead. Now, this next one, just be quick. And you will not have to shoot him. That's it, be quick. And I'm on our way back, he's going to be sort of in a random place. Um, but yeah, I, I kill him on the way back. Just because I don't want to risk trying to run past him. Because sometimes, they when you try and run past them when they're burning, you can do it. It, it, it can sort of stun them, but 
sometimes they would sort of do like a a sort of just a swipe and the swipe will just hit you instantly there's no way to dodge it so um yeah come through there grab the queen plug and then place a queen plug in here to open this gate then we get through here turn around and shoot this guy in the head if you kill him now then he's not going to wake up later and be a a problem for you now take the king plug from there and then drop down and then take the queen plug back place a queen plug in here you see our inventory we've got just enough space and place a king plug into this one now go back and get the queen plug and then go back up here and through this door and grab the king plug again now go back through the sewer yeah we're not taking any of the weapons except for the grenade launcher and the one you start with Claire's got awesome weapons I mean she gets two ammo types for two of her weapons so um, she's in, in a way she's got four weapons not like Leon yeah so here he is he's blocking my way so I'm just going to kill him Like I said, if you try and run past him, there's a rare chance he might swipe you. So, from a no damage perspective, it's best to kill him. Just in case, I'm ready, but no, he's dead. Now, it's one more G monster to worry about, but this one charges at you, so it's quite easy to dodge. No need to waste ammo on this one. So, you jump down here. And as soon as you see the G monster charge, climb out onto the uh, onto here, and then wait for him to submerge. There you go. Then quickly run past, jump down, and then be quick, and you don't need to worry about him. Come back in here and up the ladder, and that's it. No more enemies until the next boss. I used to save before. Uh, I used to save before this boss, but yeah, I just do it as soon as I get into the shower now. Uh, sorry, as soon as I get into the sewer. So we're on 1 hour 12. Laboratory is actually pretty quick, laboratory. Just make sure, obviously, you've got the rook, the king plug, and the queen plug. So you leave a pawn where it is, you place a queen plug into this one the king plug onto this one but take the bishop from it first I think that's a bishop yeah t take a bishop and place a king plug now take the knight from here and place a rook in the middle one then place a knight in the one with the knight picture and then place a bishop into this one near the door and that should be it there you go let's go and fight the boss so to fight this boss we're going to use six flame rounds and a flash grenade There is actually a flash grenade in the boss arena. So if you are unlucky and you've got no flash grenades left, don't worry, there is one in the arena. Now, code for this is like, like with this is where we're going to stand, by the way. Yeah, so we're going to stand there and make sure you're flat against the wall like I was. The password for this is green, green, red, green, or on, on, off, on. Once you've done that and activated the door, come through here and the boss will try to grab you. Shit. Now, I'm going to come and stand here where I showed you briefly earlier just stand here make sure you flat against the wall like so if you sort of sideways onto it you'll be sticking out a bit more and the boss will catch you so just make sure you're flat against the wall like so tucked into this little corner and then the boss will swipe down five times enough for that he'll try and come through his door once you come through his door we're going to sort of tuck in and get behind him and when you get past him, do not go too far away because otherwise it'll it will cause him to do his charging attack. You have to be sort of you have to be close to him, but not too far away, like I say. Because we always want to be baiting his his swipe and slam. We do not want to bait his charge. So you want to be roughly about here. That's it. You're gonna keep triggering this attack, his swipes. Once he's doing the attack, then you can move away. And each time he does that, slams his hand into the floor, shoot his weak spot with the flame round. But wait for the flames to go out. That's it. 
Just always get close to him to trigger the attack. And once the attack is in progress, you can back up a bit to avoid it. But obviously get closer again after to make sure you trigger again. Just make sure you do not get too far away. And do that five times. So that's number four. One more time. If you get too close to the end, by the way, instead of shooting him, just run past him on the right and then to turn him around and then just start going back and then come back again. Now when you shot him the fifth time, make sure you close to where you drop down and then bait his attack again and then quickly jump down, press the switch and grab the flash grenade if you need it. That's it. And then get ready. As soon as he drops down, throw the flashbang like so and then shoot him with a flame round. That's it. And that should do enough damage and it should knock him down. And then get ready, press the switch as soon as it becomes active again. You just heard him drop down onto his knees. That's it, bring it back over. Now if you've got another flashbang, be ready. If he recovers too early and starts coming for you, lob another flashbang. But if you did it well, you shouldn't need to. And you'll get that trophy gotcha. That's for killing him with only using one of the crane attacks. So once you killed him, he's going to grab Shoei and head into the um, cable car now and go down to the laboratory. Yeah, so that fight, yeah, trying to, it might take a bit of practice trying to kill him on the um, top catwalk, but that's honestly the easiest way to do it because his attack's very easy to dodge up there and he always does the same attack as long as you sort of like say do not get too far away and you know yeah keep doing that same attack really easy to dodge and the great thing is it also sets you up for using a flame round and it also it leaves him in place so he takes maximum damage from a flame round when it's burning the floor as well because flame rounds they will burn the floor there'll be flames on the floor but also the flames on the enemy so he's taking damage from the flames on the floor and from the flames on his body but with that attack that he does, it, it makes him stand still for a few seconds. So um, he, he's actually standing in a flame. Whereas on the bottom catwalk, he's moving, he's more mobile. So obviously it doesn't do as much damage to him. And that's also why we use that flash grenade when he drops down, to make him stay in place in the flames on the floor much longer. And that's what causes one flame round to knock him down um, when he first drops down to the bottom. But yeah, coming to here, with Sherry, a laboratory. So not much to do guys, 20 minutes left. Laboratory is very, very quick. There is two boss fights. But we're gonna get another hit pouch here. I get all the hit pouches on hardcore just because I do need the space at some point. Yeah, make sure you stand clear of these doors for your own safety. Lob, sh lob Sherry underneath and then close the doors. Yeah, you're going to take her just into the side room on the left. Now, it's a exclusive file in here for Claire, and you want to get this file because if you're trying to do the minimum required for Platinum, you don't actually come in. Uh, you don't actually have to come into the laboratory again with Claire. Yeah, so grab this file off the laptop next to Sherry, and then grab the flame rounds of this little uh, counter, and then come out here. Yeah, if you're doing the minimum, you only need to do like 2.5 playthroughs and you do, you do not need to come into laboratory as Claire again. So it's good to get that now. That's her only exclusive file in the labs. Now straight into this room, quickly go right, be quick, grab a hand grenade, then come back around here, around the outside to avoid that zombie in the middle coming for you. And then come around the outside, over to this ladder and climb the ladder. As long as you're quick, you should be able to get the hand grenade and get around to this ladder without any trouble getting attacked. Now when you drop down here, walk. There's a zombie just outside this door up ahead. So we're gonna walk. Now he'll always be stood in a random place. Be careful, he might be stood right outside the door. Just be careful. I'm carefully looking around, seeing where he is. There he is. Yeah, he'll always be in a random place, so just be careful. But luckily he's got his back to me. So I'm just gonna carefully move out and then headshot him. There you go. As long as you're walking, the zombies cannot hear you. As long as they can't see you as well. So, if you're full, if you're full on flame round ammo, do not get that. 
um, but get the blue key card and combine that with your wristband and when you come through here keep to the right you do not want to open that door on the left because there's all zombies waiting on the other side of it to come out so do not go too close to that door keep to the right yeah them zombies there yeah them flame, round, flame rounds I just got only get them if you've got enough space because otherwise it's going to take up an inventory slot which we're going to need and we did walk past a, a large gunpowder you're probably aware do not get that we need our inventory space we're actually going to get that on the way back when we get the hit pouch don't worry we do not miss any large gunpowders or high grade gunpowders we get them all so make way over here and use your wristband on here to activate the bridge over to the east area the enemies in this bit they are, they're pretty easy to dodge uh, we don't even have to dodge them all the plant enemies they die in one flame round and you only need to shoot them the ones which are in your way do not obviously kill them all only the ones that are in your way now when you come through here be quick because as you come through this room here a plant enemy will start to wake up but first grab this high grade gunpowder from here that's it grab that high grade gunpowder on your way past and quickly come in this end room that's it to avoid him before he wakes up in time they can't come in this room so you're safe now you wanna yeah pick up this capsule yeah take this capsule from here make sure you got an inventory space if you need to you can probably discard one or two acid rounds if you need to make space by the way if you have extra now the code for this guys is three one two three and two zero six seven so just imagine that's a keypad and they're all numbered I know they've got icons but imagine it's a keypad with numbers yeah it would be three one two three and then okay and then two zero six seven and then okay and that will unlock both the doors so we're going to come in here next if there's a plant in your way shoot it for flame round grab the large gunpowder and combine that with that large that last high grade gunpowder and also grab a hand grenade and then come in here and place the capsule inside the cartridge now you're going to press red green blue red green blue red green blue that's it I do make a little mistake here but all I do is switch it back I just press one of the buttons uh, one too many times I just have to switch it back yeah so red green blue red green blue red green blue fairly simple just start from red and keep moving left and then go back to the right and then keep going through all the time yeah and that will fill up the cartridge with a um, green solution And now we're going to come out here and head left. If there's a plant enemy in your way, kill him with a flame round, like so. That will kill him in one hit. Great for them guys, because normally you have to have pinpoint accuracy. But yeah, that's really good for killing them. Now there's going to be no enemies in here for the moment. But it will be a bit nearer to the end. So first of all, we're going to come in here. You can grab these flame rounds if you have space. Do not take them if they're going to take up another slot. Now you want to headshot these three enemies, which I do. That's it, there's four here, but you only need to kill them three. And then get a flame round ready. Now a lick is going to appear. Straight away, shoot it with a flame round and then run past and in the door behind it. There you go, flame round, run past and the door behind it. Be quick here. That one's not necessarily alerted to you, but it's another one which comes through about two seconds later and he will be alerted to you just by default. So yeah, that's why I quickly shoot that one and then run past him. I like to shoot him that way because then he's not going to do a, his tongue attack which he can do and you will not be able to dodge that when you try and run past him so when you come through that door quickly kill that zombie with a headshot and then this one when he falls down the steps I think that's the third set of steps and then there will be another enemy in here which will start to wake up kill this enemy first there we go now once you've done that we're going to grab the um, the signal modulator there's a high grade gunpowder but we're going to leave it for the moment we're coming back all we're going to do now we're going to go and get the hit pouch now and get that large gunpowder that we left in the first room the first sort of area is it the north yeah the north area in the laboratory
Yeah, I do. I do a little bit of backtracking, I guess, but it's, it's mainly just to um, you know optimize my inventory space, you know, and keep the boss fights and uh, encounters nice and easy. Make sure we're stocked up and ready for them. Yeah, them flash flash grenades we've got. You can discard them as well if you need to. Other than other than um, you know, Mr. X. Yeah, keep to the left here, and in this room ahead, there might be an enemy now. So it's come approach the door very slowly, and then you can hit that zombie. Yeah, there might be one enemy here. He doesn't always appear, but there might be one enemy that's sort of triggered. Now I'm going to use signal modulator on this, examine it, and then switch it over to the relevant frequency, which is MUF, and then obviously line up the waves, and then place it, and I'll unlock all these little shutters. I'm going to grab the hip pouch only. That's it. And then quickly get out. Now I'm going to head back into the kitchen, which I almost forgot. Yeah, head back to the kitchen. Yep, yeah, almost forgot. And grab the large gunpowder. Now we've got a space. Yep, and then we're not coming back into this area, this side of the north area. So it's back down here. Again, avoid that door on the left there. And now we're going to go back into the... Is it east? Is it east area? I think it is. Yeah, back to the east area now. Yeah, what's I saying about flash grenades? Yeah, I only use flash grenades. We use them on, we use them on the liquor when we get the maiden medallion. We use them on Mister X if we need to. We use them on the three enemies in the sewer when we first get into the sewer. If you remember, the three enemies in that um, control room, and then we also use one or two flash grenades on G2 and yet other than that I don't use them for anything so them flash grenades I've got probably going to get discarded if I need the space yeah so now back in here grab the high grade gunpowder now and combine it for large gunpowder that's it makes more acid rounds now we're going to come all the way back down the bottom yeah fortunately that flame round probably didn't kill that liquor and there's two liquors. So when we get back into this bottom corridor where that liquor was, we're going to walk. Yeah, so walk. That's it. And I'm um, going to go to the. Nope, I forgot. I had to unlock it first. Yeah, we're going to have to go to that slot in the wall at the end, which is uh, it's got a little beacon. I'm going to place a signal modulator and turn on the power. Yeah, so them three zombies were killed here. If you didn't kill them, they normally wake up when that liquor spawns in. And now we actually killed them, uh, you know, when it was safe to do so without fear of alerting the liquor. So set that to MURF and then obviously line up the waves and slot it in to activate the power. Now it's going to head back and take that door which we passed, which I tried to go in to begin with. Just bring that liquor away so I can get past him. Like so. Always walk when there's liquor around. Unless you have the rocket launcher. Yeah, unless you have the rocket launcher, always walk when they're around. If you have the Gatling gun, the thing is with the Gatling gun, it doesn't start to shoot straight away. And um, when the barrel starts to roll up, that makes noise and that actually triggers the liquors and they can reach you before you get a chance to shoot them. So, l liquors are the only enemy with the Gatling gun which it's not you have to be sort of a little bit skilled to use them, use it with, you know. But rocket launcher just demolishes everything. But it's a bit more difficult to unlock. You need to do it with Leon. Leon's more difficult in my eyes. Yep. And um, obviously in that room, make sure you place in the cartridge and got the blue cartridge from it. Now we're going to head back. But in here again, make sure you walk. We need to come back through here. We come back through this room quite a few times. And to one hit kill a liquor with a flame round, by the way, you have to hit it in its hernia. Well, I guess it's um, its little tail, its bum. You need to hit it in its butt with a flame round. I don't know why, but if I hit him in its head, it doesn't one hit kill him. But if I hit him in the butt with a flame round, it does. I think it's because when you hit liquor with a flame round, it moves back. Yeah, here, grab a flame round and also grab a high grade gunpowder. That's it, and then back out, make sure you walk. And then go right and back into the room where that ladder is. And there's a large gunpowder in here, which we're gonna get. 
and combine that high grade which you just got to make more acid rounds. Yeah, I'm going to combine them, make an extra slot. Yeah, the, because yeah, be ready with flame round, guys. Again, if there are any plants are blocking your way, yeah, with the liquors, like I say, if you if you shoot them in the head, it, it won't one hit kill them with flame round. But if you shoot them in its in its butt, it will. I think it's like I say, they they move back, and they sort of move back. It keeps them in the flames. But if you shoot them in the head, I think they sort of move back out of the flame a little bit. So the flame on the floor doesn't do as much damage to them. That's why you need to shoot them in the rear. So yeah, use a blue cartridge on that uh, machine and that will kill most of the plants to begin with and now we're going to go and get the um, purple key cards combine that with your wristbands and now make your way back up to Sherry but be ready to kill any plants in your way um, if you take too long a lot of them will sort of close in on you but as long as you be quick you shouldn't have to kill more than one or two but yeah just come straight for the ladder kill any plants in your way yeah I come back this way a little bit longer but it's less plants in your way if you do it this way this is why I come this way otherwise I think it's like two or three plants in your way that you have to kill uh, probably more so yeah come back through here we've already killed all the enemies it's only the lickers we have to worry about we can safely just walk through here yeah and do not use the flame round on a liquor when it's on the wall you shouldn't be doing it anyway but yeah, because it will fall off the wall and um, the fire on the wall will not do any damage to it. So there's going to be a plant up here now on the third set of steps. So just be ready. There it is. That's it, just that single enemy. And now we can head back to Sherry. Uh, sorry, not Sherry, we're heading to the boss. Sorry, yeah, I'm early. We're not quite there yet. Yeah, we're going to head into the west area. Now they've got a key card to unlock it. G3 is very, very easy. Probably going to be the easiest boss, actually. I think it's the hardest boss for a lot of players. Yeah, we're just going to stun lock him with acid rounds. Acid rounds stun lock him very, very well. But you just need to, you need to wait for him to recover from the... Um, from the acid round, wait for him to recover before you shoot him with another one if you don't let him to recover it will not stun him so you stun him wait for him to recover and then shoot again and you just keep doing that, very very easy yeah grab the hand grenade just near that guy there's a tape by him and a hand grenade you only want the hand grenade and you're going to use the signal modulator on this set it to OSS and obviously line up the wave and then slot it in that will activate the power and it'll make it so you can discard it. You don't need to activate the power here, but I just do this so that I can discard it. That's it. Do not open the item box nearby by mistake. Yeah, I've done that before. I got so far into room and accidentally opened the item box and had to restart. But it, I can't remember. I mean, I've not. I think I did try it back in the past, but I've not tried recently. You know, does it only? Does it only count if you actually use the item box? You know, opening it, is that okay? Does it only matter if you take something out or put something in? You know what I mean? Where it will void the trophy. I'm not sure exactly. Um, intro with this, there'll be a cutscene and I'll advance the story. Probably just checking the records actually. Yeah, I'll have to do that. I have to load up a safe and they're checking the records. I have to open the item box and check, see if anything changes. So in here, all you're doing, getting the high grade gunpowder and the large gunpowder and you're going to combine them make more acid rounds you should have 40 approximately 40 acid rounds and I'm going to get this uh, ink ribbon and save my game save number three that's it I do not need to make any more saves and now we're going to have our acid rounds ready and go and fight G3 so as I say very very simple just keep stun knocking him wait for him to recover before shooting with another and because you're waiting for him to recover each time he will slowly get closer and closer to you so if he gets too close and run out of space just run behind him but when you run behind him don't fire as soon as he recovers because when you run behind him he'll walk in and he won't turn around on the spot he'll walk in an arc 
and it's likely if you shoot him as soon as he recovers when you're behind him you'll miss him so when you're behind him you see here he'll, he'll walk in an arc like so and just wait for him to be facing you again and shoot him again with another acid round and just repeat the process after about 12 rounds as long as you're hitting on each one sort of like the head area he'll go into his next phase and stop shooting him at that point so after about 12 just slow down after about 12 to see what he's going to do I've not even been counting so I'm not sure what what shot we're on but yeah you, you know you know it's me I do actually stop and wait to see there you go yeah because you want to wait until he's recovered from his um, you know animation triggering that he's entering his next phase and then once he's recovered repeat the process again now after I think it's eight more after that so you've got 12 we'll normally put him into a second phase and I think it's another eight we'll put him into his final phase so on his final phase you can't damage him so just don't shoot him until he's done this attack and um, he's recovered so you can attack him again again when you're behind him wait for him to walk around and face you again before you shoot so on eight is that eight this got to be it I think it was eight yeah there we go just leave him now and what we're going to do while we're waiting so obviously make sure wherever he goes you stay out of the way he's going for that one there so I'm going to grab this hand grenade on that left corner that is on the south in the middle and on the right so it's at the south section and on the right but you can get that at the end of the fight so you just want that hand grenade yeah, make sure you're not standing in line with him, otherwise that will hit you. Just stand, hide somewhere to the south. And then once he's recovered, just start shooting him again. It will take. It takes about 30, 32 acid rounds to kill him. 32 or 33, somewhere near there. And like I said, we end up with about 40, 40 plus. That's why you can spare quite a few. I think I had I had 42 altogether, didn't I? And you see how many I have left. Look at that. Yeah, I think it's 30. Yeah, 30 rounds that took. Yeah, so all we're going to do now, we're going to come in here and grab the high powered rounds. That's in the southwest corner, I believe. And then grab the elevator. Opposite corner to the elevator, pretty much. Yeah, so just make sure you've got the, high, the hand grenade, the high powered rounds, uh, before you come up. There's, there's one zombie which you need to hit, and that's all. But he, he's got like one HP. You don't have to kill him. Um, if you leave him to burn and just move away, he will die eventually but at the end you have to because if you try and do the minimum required for platinum like I say you don't have to come into the laboratory again and so you do not need to do this fight again but it's the trophy for killing the boss with four minutes remaining and that's why we just want to kill the zombie get rid of him quickly just it'll save the next sort of few seconds which you may need depending on how resourceful you've been with your hand grenades if you've got all seven left and you hit them all on target You'll be able to get rid of the boss really quick. But yeah, that all depends on you. Yeah, so just getting Sherry. Yep, getting the pink key card now. Combine it for wristband. And now we can head into the elevator. Yeah, you need two flame rounds for this next area. Very important. There's going to be two planet enemies, which you have to engage because you're going to be waiting for Sherry to open a door and while you are while you are waiting the two plant enemies are going to come for you and that's why you want two flame rounds just so you can dispatch them really really easy Thank you for being so nice to me. For helping me. I'm really glad. 
glad I met you. I'm really glad I met you too, Sherry. But save your things until I get you out of this place. Yeah, once you get to this um, bottom control room, there's actually a first aid spray in here and a combat knife. But we don't need them. You can, I guess you could take a combat knife if you wanted in case a plant did grab you. But it's not going to happen as long as you follow me and you've got two flame rounds left. Yeah, so once you get down this elevator, there'll be three or four plants. But with Claire, you can run straight past them as long as you're quick before they wake up. With Leon, there's sort of one or two are already woken up, so you have to sort of f have a way to kill him. But yeah, or stun them. But yeah, with Claire, you can just run straight past before you get a chance to wake up, like so. And then down here, interact with the door. And then Sherry will jump through and try to open it from behind. And while you're doing so, like I say, there'll be two planet enemies. Just kill them both with a flame round when they drop down. Of yeah, the, the last boss we're going to be engaging soon. You can kill him in six or seven hand grenades as long as you throw him to his eyes. So what you normally need to do, when you pop his eyes, and all his eyes pop, you need to wait for him to grow back before you attack him again. So that's, sort of bit, that's how he takes damage, and he'll, he'll do more damage that way. Uh, but without hand grenades, you'll have to use a minigun. And so the minigun, shoot his eyes and then wait for him to grow back before you shoot them again. But once, yeah, we're just waiting for the show to open the door. Like I said, there'll be one, there'll be one zombie on fire. You can either shoot him to get past him quicker. Or you can just wait for him to die. But because we need to do this bit with it, with more than four minutes remaining we need to be as quick as possible so yeah just shoot him once i actually missed him twice i don't know how look <laughs> yeah just one shot we'll knock him down and then straight of straight over to the carriage you need to head into the carriage and grab the uh, twin the twin uh, power power uh, part can't even remember the name of it now Little like little power module thing. Thingy magic, that's what we'll call it. Yeah, you get this from inside. And then head back out after and head into the control room and place it into the slot. Pull the lever down. That will release the carriage and also grab the minigun. If you don't have space for minigun, just place the power modules in here first and then grab the minigun afterwards. And then come back outside and the boss will appear. Now when he's on the top, do not stay still for too long so he'll eventually jump on you. You can normally get a few shots off and then you need to move before he jumps down, otherwise he'll jump on you. And then you're gonna you're gonna lob grenades at him. But like I say, wait for the eyes to grow back before he lobs grenades. If you're quick enough, if you see him climbing towards a wall, you can lob a grenade when he's about to climb and stop him. But yeah, if you're not quick enough you'll miss. Yeah, I wasted that grenade. I wasted a lot of grenades, haven't I? That's the third grenade I've wasted. Yeah, and when he climbs up the wall, if you do not manage to knock him down, just make sure you run away because he'll jump on you. And then obviously resume the strategy. And his attacks he does normally, if you stop still and start sitting the floor, he's going to charge at you and just go left or right to dodge his charge. He sort of, he'll charge in a straight line. So yeah, like so, he's about to do it now. Let's make sure you run to the side. And just make sure you keep your distance because he'll, he'll do like a flurry of swipes like so. And he actually makes quite a lot of distance with them. He does like a probably eight slash combo. So yeah, just make sure you always keep your distance. And you've got a grenade left. You can stop him from climbing, but like I say, you have to be quick. You get a few shots off on his ice if you can. And then obviously run away. Yeah, be careful. You almost got me then. I'm very, very lucky I didn't take damage. Almost did. Yep, when you run out of grenades, just keep shooting his eyes when they respawn. Yep, when he's does that, run to the side. Yep, and eventually... Yep, 
careful you don't let him get too close. Always keep your distance from him. Yeah, eventually, once he's doing enough damage, we'll do that. We'll see that little um, animation with him. And he'll sort of separate from his torso. But, but he's actually going to die now, but he's on like a timer. But shooting his eyes now will like, just kill him a bit quicker. Yeah, when he separates from his torso, he, he's going to die. It takes about 20 seconds. But shooting him makes him die a bit quicker. And that's it, you get, should get a trophy guys, if you haven't already got it, with time to spare. And you see here, you only see one trophy pop. A hero heroine emerges, but I pop like probably four or five at the same time here. Yeah, one hour 42, three saves, Claire Redfield, hardcore, S+. Plus. You should unlock with that, if you haven't already, the infinite pistol, the infinite assault rifle, and the infinite Gatling gun. You can use them for all your, you don't have to worry about no box now. So you can just use them for all your further playthroughs. Yeah, I'll just show you the trophies. So if I come on here, if I go and order new to old. Yeah, see all these trophies are popped at once. We've got Frugalist, Hardcore College Student, Sistling Scarlet Hero, a Heroin Emerges, Minimalist. And a small carbon footprint. Now, if you want to know how many steps I did, when we made save number three, I said about 11,200 steps. Yeah, on save number three. So we probably completed the game at about 12,000 steps. So yeah, you still had a few thousand to spare. But yeah, that's it, guys. My no box hardcore S plus clear rank. Like, check my playlist for any other videos, and I will be doing a few more videos uh, now with the next gen versions. Probably be doing all the DLC, and also um. I'm trying to do a no damage complete platinum one, so stay tuned for them. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next video.